As you can see right here, the cowling for the windshield on this van is clearly broken. So we need to remove this cowling so we can replace it. And the first step that you're gonna to wanna to do is remove your windshield wipers. And how you'll do that, if you look on the bottom side here, there's a little an indent in there. You'll just take a small straight screwdriver. You'll put that inside of there and just kind of lift up on it. And that'll take your cap out and set that off to the side. Next up, what you'll want to do is this here is a 15 millimeter bolt. So you'll just go ahead and now I'm using a socket. You could use a wrench, I guess, if you want to. Sockets can be much easier because the bolts are recessed down in there. And what I'll do is I'll loosen up that nut just a little bit. And at this point, you have one or two options. They actually make a wiper removal tool it's like a puller and it will reach down underneath and grab it and you'll tighten it on the top and it pulls it off I'll show you another way that you can do that with just stuff you have at home you don't need to go buy a special tool and what I'll do is I will lift up the wiper a bit and I'll grab it down here and kind of pull on it a bit and keep tension on it keep pulling on it bring the nut out so it's above the post because what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a hammer and we're gonna tap on that nut. But what you wanna do is make sure the nut's up above the post so you don't damage that post on there. So keep pressure on the wiper, pulling it outwards a little bit and just start tapping on it. And there it goes, see now how it turns? So now I'll just set my wiper back down for a second. Now I'll take my ratchet or my socket pull that back off now the easier way to get it off at this point is pull your wiper back up and then just slide it off and there you go you have your first wiper off and now let's move over to the passenger side next we have six t25 torx bit screws located across the top of the cowling here we have one located here one here one here, 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 and over here. So we'll go ahead and remove those now. I'm gonna take that piece out since we're here because that's a piece that was broken on the end. Now we're gonna pop open the hood and work our cowling out. Last step before we remove the cowling is over here on this side, this line you see right here, this here is your washer fluid line that runs up there to your little squirters that go up under the windshield, your sprayers. And so what you'll do is just kind of pull those two apart. And normally it comes out of the bigger side, but either side doesn't matter. What you'll do is take those apart. And if you'll follow this up underneath where it's right here, there's like a little rubber grommet that goes inside this pan for your wiper motor. And what you'll do is just take like your finger and you'll push on it and it'll poke up inside of there because this line connects up to your cowling. So I have that pushed in there a little bit. So now what you'll start to do, and by the way, these also have two little arms on each side, right? where your wiper arms connect, and these have been turned. Uh, and I'll show you once I get it out so you understand. So what you'll do is you'll start to lift it up, and the problem you're gonna have is it's gonna wanna run it, bump into the hood. So what I'll do is I'll start on one side, I'll start over on this side, you're gonna kinda have to lift it up in the middle a bit so it bends, and then once you do, slide that side up. And as you slide it up, you'll kinda lift up on this side, keep sliding that side up, and here's that little washer line you saw and then once you get it up then you'll just kind of slide it out this way and that removes your windshield cowling these here are those little hooks I was telling you about and they have been moved and I'm sorry I should have showed you that before but basically all you do is you put a Phillips screwdriver in there and they have a little arrow and then that points you to the direction that they're aimed at and you'll just move them off to the side but now you have your cowling out and you can go ahead and either put in your new cowling or if you're like me and your next step's gonna be removing your wiper motor tray. 
Now to remove your wiper motor tray is a, actually it's also a pretty simple process as well. Step one over here, this here is your electrical connector over here and you'll see it has one of those red retaining clips again. What I usually do is I'll take a screwdriver and push on it from the bottom if I, you have access to them and just kind of push that up. You'll see it popped up like that and then you'll just press on this gray tab here and sometimes these can be sticky. There we go. And we have that loose. Now, if you look down underneath on both sides, these here are your drains. So when water comes down and gets inside of there, it drains this out to the bottom. And what you'll do is you'll see it has like this little clamp on there. If you'll kind of pull down on one side and push up on the other, it'll separate them like so. And then that's off to the side. Now, I'll be honest with you, generally you can usually leave those on there and all you do is put your fingers on both sides of it and just push downward and they come off <laughs> but if it makes you feel better you can undo the clamp so once you have those two done the only thing you have left is you have four bolts and they're a number 13 millimeter and you have one that's located back over in this corner and you have two here towards the center and then you have one that's located back over there and I'm gonna take those out now. And what I do is I use, I have a 12 inch extension and it just makes it easier when I'm doing these. It just gets it out past it and I can get my tool in there. Um, you could use a wrench if you really wanted to, but me, I like to try and do it the easy way. But there are four nuts that connect to those brackets and those are a 10 millimeter and so you'll remove these four nuts along here and reach down in here and pull these bolts out now the ones on the side sometimes if they get kind of caught in there and you can't get your fingers in what you can do is either use like a magnetic pickup tool or just leave them there and when you pull the uh, assembly out but I managed to get all four out so these are the four bolts and then these here are the nuts that are used on it so now that you have that out it's actually pretty simple and what I'll do is just start to kind of lift up on it and you kind of have to tilt it and then pull it out but you'll just kind of and once again make sure both of your drains are out if you're tugging on it and it's not coming out it's because you forgot to do your drains so you just kind of lift up and you'll kind of work your way over to the side like so and now what I'll do is I'll just grab it right in here and just lift it out and there you go now I totally get this is a little bit unorthodox and you may have a hard time duplicating this in your particular situation but I think once you see this you'll get an idea and you'll be able to repeat or duplicate similar to what I'm doing here now your cowl kind of curves towards the end so on this end i just have it sitting on my bench vise to lift it up where we're going to want to try and do the repair you're going to want this to be flat now i'm going to be using a two-part epoxy to do this and i don't want it to get through and get on my bench so i have it sitting on a piece of cardboard my other thought with it was i need to be able to hold this part down flat so what i have it sounds funny but I have a tool bag here with some tools in it and basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set it on there like so so it holds it down flat Now I'm gonna move it for right now so you can see the other things that I'm talking about the key when we start to do the epoxy and I have my other piece here is when I set it in place I don't want that to move while I epoxy it or it's not going to look right. So the other thing I came up with, I tried doing like a vise in through here, but the problem is with the angle of this side of the cowl, it just slides off. And so what I came up with is if I set this metal plate up here against this side, once this has some weight and it doesn't move, and I move my other little toolbox that has some weight up against it, it should hold it in place. Now, once I get that done, I have just a plate here and I have a couple of plastic utensils. And in this bag here, 
and I get this just at Harbor Freight, and I've used this to do all sorts of different repairs, but I just have a two-part epoxy on here. So basically, once I have this laid out right, we're gonna take our two-part epoxy, we're gonna mix it together, we're gonna mix up a nice good batch, because I wanna put a nice thick coating in here to try and hold that in place. We'll put that in there and let it sit for a few hours so it dries real good and real hard, and then let's give it a try and see how it does on the van. Now that I have kind of my, shall we call it a jig, <laughs> set up to hold this in place. Now the idea is you wanna keep this held together as tight as you possibly can so that when you flip it over, you don't have any gaps. So I have pushed this together as tight as I could. I have this plate here, my toolbox, everything's pressed up as tight as I can get it. And then that way, Hopefully we won't have as big of a seam on the other side when we get it done. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix up the epoxy now and then let's check back in and I'll show you how I get that applied. I gotta move quickly here. I got my epoxy mixed up and I'm just using a spoon here on my plate. And now I'll just kind of take it and I'm gonna scoop it and just start working it over that seam. And I'm gonna work it to both sides as well. we want to cover all that up make sure we get it nice and secured back together again now we have a nice thick coat of epoxy in there and we're just gonna let that sit now for a few hours and dry and then we'll come back and we'll check on it and see how it did I've let this sit for a couple hours now, so I'm anxious to un take our jig apart here, if you will, and let's see how our repair came out. I think it's going to do quite well. Let's take a look on the other side. Not quite as well as I had hoped. It's not super even but it is holding it in place and it will keep it together, I believe. Let me show you a more up close look. And that's how it came out. See, now you can still kind of see the crack along in there, but it does hold it together now and it's not gonna come apart and we can at least reinstall the cowling and have it be held in place without it rattling around. Reinstalling the wiper motor and the cowl is a quick and easy process. You have four bolts. You have one located back here, 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 and over here. Those are a 13 millimeter. They look just like this. And then you have four nuts that go on these posts located along here. There's four of those. They look like this right here. And they're a 10 millimeter. And so now all I gotta do is take my wiper motor, set it in place, now why it's out, and I can show you real quick and easy. I gotta reattach this. It got a little wet today when we had to do some washing after we got done. In any case, you have your drains here. Don't forget to reattach your drains. You have one here and here. Those will just slide back up on there and then all you'll do is squeeze these tabs if you want. Right now, you can just loosen them up and undo them. And then that way, once you get them slid up on top of your uh, wiper motor, you can just push those on and tighten down your clamps. And then you have your plug right here that plugs into it. So now that everything's out, let's just set it in and it goes really quick. So what I always do is swing it in and you wanna start with getting it attached up here on the top where these posts are. Just kind of lift it up and over the posts and just like that you're in place. Now before I go ahead and I do anything in terms of the bolts of the nuts we go in here and we just slide our uh, our drain tubes back up onto the tubes that are in the housing for our wiper motor assembly and just like that. That one's pushed on. Tighten up the clamp. It's really easy to do. This one's a little bit more difficult to get to, but I can easily get my hands down in here. You'll slide that back up on. Push those clamps back together like that. And that part's done. Now, while we're here, what we can easily do is right here. And let me get a light so you can see it a bit better. Right here is our electrical connection. So we'll go ahead and we'll just plug that in. 
And once we do, make sure and push down that retaining locking tab. And now your wiper mode is reconnected. Now, we'll take our four nuts here along the top. And I'm just going to kind of start to hand tighten them. I'll come back in with my uh, Milwaukee ratchet wrench. Tighten those down. We don't need that light anymore. Just like that. Then, I like to start all my bolts by hand tightening them a bit, and I just have a long 12 inch extension, 3 8 extension with a 13 millimeter socket, and I'll just take them in. That way, if you're cross threading or something, if you're using a power tool, then you're gonna trash your thread. So by doing it this way, I know that I'm not gonna damage any of my bolts or my threads when I get those put in. It's nice to have the longer extension when you go to these side ones because it'll get it out where it's easy for you to be able to work with it. And then we have our one over here. And those are started. So now I can come back through with my ratchet. Now let's slide our cowling in place and put the screws into the cowling. Then we can put the wiper, mo uh, wiper arms back on and then we'll be done. And this is the one we did the repair with the epoxy. Came out pretty good. You can still see the crack there naturally, but the piece is held in nice and tight. So I'm hoping it's gonna last a long time for the client. So now what I always do is I'll go in and go up on the one side. You'll see over here, I'm going way up and then slide it up underneath over on this side. See how we're doing that? And then you're gonna just kind of work them both back down together. And if you're having a hard time, like this one's giving me a little bit, the other thing you can always do is lift up the hood just a little bit taller. Bring it down, sorry. And it will give you just a little bit more room. Just like that. Now we'll put our hood support back up. Now that we have that in place, you have your washer tube and that goes through the hole that's located right here and it has this rubber grommet. So what you'll do is feed that through and then push that rubber grommet place. Got a spider falling up there. And now connect your washer tube back up so you don't forget it. I'll tell you, I've done that before where I finished this and then I'm like, why is it the washer's working all of a sudden? Well, because I neglected to hook up the tube. So here's our tube. And we have that connected. Now just work the cowl back over onto the post for your wiper arms, gently, and set it into place. Now what you want to do is close your hood, and then we'll go ahead and we'll put in the screws that hold it down along the top. Now it's time to add our screws back in. You have six screws, you have one on the ends, you have one here, 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 and on the other side there. They look like this. They have the star bit and they're a T25. And what I always do is I'll start on the corners, on the edges, and then work my way in. And what you do is number one, first thing, when you're tightening down, especially the edges, don't tighten them down hard. Basically just get them hand snugged because that's what breaks those corners. But if you'll just start it on the one side and then you can kind of pull it, the cowling over to the other side, it'll help you be able to line those up. So this one over here, I'll go ahead and I'll put this one in. And now I've done like three or four turns, so it's still super loose, but now I can push it back that way. Now I can come over here to this side. Try and line it up. Now sometimes you have to reach in here and push that little 
grommet over and there we go now it's lined up and this you know this was a bad design by Chrysler right? in my opinion they should have recalled these that's why they're all broken on all these vans so now we have those two going these were just going to barely snug down because otherwise we're going to break it again now we can move to the middle ones Reinstalling your wipers is pretty simple and easy to do. So now all you're going to want to do is take your hand on the base like you see here. Put your other hand up here. Let me move back a bit so you can see it. And then twist the base so it looks like this. Once you do that, you just set this onto the post there for your wiper motor. Lay your wiper down flat. Then what you want to do is adjust it. You want your wiper to be sitting in a horizontal position as straight as you can. Just like that. Now, before I go tightening that down, I'll set the other one in position. That way I can make sure that we have everything lined up properly. And that looks really good like that. See, now they're both nice and level across here. So now all we got to do is we'll take the nut that goes on the post that looks like this. We'll go ahead and just start to thread that on there. Once again, uh, that nut, by the way, is a 15. And we'll go ahead and tighten that down. And if you'll keep one hand up here so it doesn't want to move it, and just like that. Then we have the plastic cap that goes over the nut, as you see here. And you'll just push that down in, and it'll kind of click into place. We're going to do the same thing here with the other side. We're just going to start the nut. Tighten this down. And look how nice our wiper arms look too, by the way. They look brand new again. Never hurts to give them a quick spray paint when you have them off with a nice gloss black. Maybe you want to do a flat black. I like the look of the gloss back. And then all we do is put our cap back in and your wipers are installed and your job is complete. So on that note, we've gotten everything all done and put back together again. So if this video has been helpful for you, do me a favor if you would. Just take a second hit that like button for me. I'm new here to YouTube and it only helps me. Uh, if you like this video and like to see others, I do a lot of work on these grand caravans in town and countries. I also work on many other different cars. We do mini bikes and, and we do go-karts. We have garage projects. We do all sorts of different things here where we're doing it ourselves and building things. If you'd like to see more of those, why don't you stick around with me here and see what else we got coming up and hit that subscribe button. Hopefully this has helped you. Thanks for watching.